Welcome to the historic Bigelow House at 918 East Glass Avenue in Olympia. Uh, it is likely one of the oldest houses in Olympia, if not the oldest, built by 1860. It's a Gothic Revival style house. It's owned by the nonprofit Bigelow House Preservation Association, and today we're going to take a little tour through the house. First, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the family. Uh, it's quite a remarkable family. Uh, both Daniel Bigelow and his wife, Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow, were Oregon Trail pioneers. Uh, both of them came over the Oregon Trail, uh, settled in the area. Daniel Bigelow was an exceptionally well-educated person. Um, he had gone to Union College in Schenectady, New York, uh, read law at Harvard, and as I said, came over the Oregon Trail. His wife, Anne Elizabeth White, came with her mother, and family over the Oregon Trail, and they met their father, uh, who had preceded him uh, here in Washington. Um, Anne Elizabeth Bigelow was an early teacher. She taught at the Packwood Farm out in the Nisqually Valley. Uh, Daniel Bigelow uh, was, as I mentioned, a lawyer. Uh, we have his diary, which is very interesting because he talks about arriving in Portland and saying there were already too many lawyers there. So he decided to come uh, north to Puget Sound. He came with the Denny Party, and those of you from Seattle probably know that name. He decided that his fortunes would much improve if he came on to Olympia, uh, which he did. And it made a lot of sense then because uh, Olympia had the land office. It was destined to be the territorial capital. Daniel Bigelow is often credited with spurring the creation of a new territory uh, to separate from the Oregon Territory. He gave a very famous Fourth of July speech urging a separate territory. He set up his law practice here in Olympia and was called upon to be a member of the very first territorial legislature when Washington Territory was created from Oregon in 1853. So starting in 1854, uh, he was part of that very first legislature, very influential, uh, helped draft the first uh, education laws for the territory, uh, was very well respected. So they're quite an interesting family. Uh, they married in 1854. Uh, they later had a very uh, large family. And they built this house sometime before 1860 uh, that reflected their status in the community. another one of the beautiful rooms in the house um, and has a lot of distinguished furnishings. The chair here uh, reflects an important event uh, at the house in the fall of 1871. Both Daniel and Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow were strong advocates for women's rights and women's suffrage and uh, Susan B. Anthony visited the house for dinner uh, here when she visited uh, Washington Territory and uh, she talked about coming to the house. Uh, she said that Mrs. Bigelow was splendid, and uh, it's likely that she even sat in this chair. Uh, Daniel Bigelow uh, was a member of the legislature at the time she visited Olympia, and he escorted her to the dais of the legislature when she addressed uh, the body. Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow was a member of uh, the Washington Territory Women's Suffrage Association, very prominent in advocating for women's right to vote. You'll begin to see some of the wonderful musical instruments in the house. The Steinway piano, uh, we uh, contacted the Steinway company and they said, oh, you know, that came around the horn and was sold to a family by the name of Bigelow. So it's great to make those connections and know that what's in the house uh, truly reflects the taste and, and times in which the Bigelows lived. in what uh, we call the library of the house and uh, you'll notice the beautiful uh, wallpapers throughout the house. Um, they reflect the period of the house and were part of the restoration of the house in the 1990s. Uh, the nonprofit uh, Bigelow House Preservation Association acquired the house in the 1990s and then the last generation of the Bigelows lived in the house until 2005. In this room are some very interesting uh, furnishings and throughout the house you'll see only the furnishings uh, that the Bigelows had in the house. So everything here is very authentic and contribute to the character of the house. 
Um, this is uh, Daniel Bigelow's law desk, at least the top part of it, which uh, the family has said that he brought with him over the Oregon Trail. And it's a standing desk, which would have been popular at that time. Uh, we have a number of other items that he brought with him over the Oregon Trail, and likely items uh, that Aunt Elizabeth White brought too. Uh, we have many of his law books, and we have a wonderful collection of books and papers in the house. And again, it really reflects uh, the entire history of the family over the long period they lived in the house. We're in another of the period decorated rooms of the Bigelow House, uh, again featuring a lot of musical instruments. Of course, during the time people made their own entertainment and so the Bigelows uh, were very interested in music and that's reflected in the house. Also in this room are some really beautiful uh, handcrafts that were done by uh, members of the Bigelow family, probably the women of the family. These shell frames are very unique. Uh, the family story is that uh, they would go down to the Port of Olympia when the ships came in with ballast and they would look through what, what was in the, the ballast and pick out the shells and create these beautiful shell pictures. Among the real treasures of the house is this sewing box uh, that belonged to the family and there's an example of some of the handwork uh, of the women of the family. Uh, there's a lot of women's history in the house from Susan B. Anthony uh, to Anne Elizabeth Bigelow to the achievements of the Bigelow daughters uh, who were teachers and prominent members of the community as well. Among uh, the treasures of the house are uh, a lot of the kitchen and home implements that the family acquired over time and we've displayed them in various uh, parts of the house. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, this is a spice box. Of course, this would have been a very important uh, part of Aunt Elizabeth White Bigelow and other members of the family's uh, ability to make tasty meals. And uh, I was just remarking that you can still smell some of the spices here. Also on this shelf are what they called um, sad irons, and this was uh, how folks used to iron. I think they called them sad because they were so heavy and it made uh, wash and ironing day uh, quite a trial. We're now in the dining room of the house, and it reflects a little later period of the house, both in the wall coverings, uh, the window coverings, and the light fixtures. Daniel Richardson Bigelow died after the turn of the 20th century. Anne Elizabeth White Bigelow uh, lived until the 1920s. And as I mentioned, generations of the Bigelows continue to live in the house. Uh, this room then reflects the, the later uh, period. Uh, we also have many of the original uh, pieces of uh, dishware, uh, glassware, and other accoutrements of the family and uh, a lot of the, again, original furnishings that belong to the Bigelows. Well, we're in the last of the rooms uh, currently open to the public in the house, and uh, some of you may recognize it as a 1950s kitchen, and that's what it is. Uh, as we uh, interpret the house, we interpret the long period of history of the Bigelows in the house as well as their role in Olympia history. And so we've decided to restore this room as a 1950s kitchen reflecting that period of the house. Well, we're outside uh, the historic Bigelow House on Glass Avenue in Olympia. Uh, the house has such a distinctive architecture. It's called Carpenter Gothic and uh, was popular during the period, although when this house was built, it was a little out of fashion from the East Coast. Uh, you'll see a lot of distinctive elements, including the trim, uh, the steep gables, uh, the arched front window, and all the detailing on the porches and it's considered one of the best examples of the Gothic Revival period uh, in the state of Washington. Uh, it really reflects uh, one family's idea of having uh, a pretty impressive house in the new town of Olympia.